All right, guys, today our topic is going to be factoring a quadratic equation when a is equal to 1. Now, that's a lot of information right there just in that title. Uh, and, and a lot of it probably is a little confusing, too. I mean, what is a? Why is it equal to 1? And you may even be asking, what is a quadratic equation or what does factoring mean? Now, just to explain all of this, essentially what we're going to be doing, factoring means breaking down a complex equation into two simpler parts, two or more simpler parts. And it's a very, very common topic to be discussing in algebra, uh, any sort of algebra, algebra, really. A quadratic equation simply means it's nonlinear, has a x value or any variable that is a, to a higher power than one. Now I'm going to discuss that and show some examples in just a moment. And then we'll talk about what this A means as well in case you're unfamiliar with that. So my first example is going to be the equation x squared plus 10x plus 21. Now, this is what I mean by a quadratic equation. You can see here that our x, our variable, has a power of 2 right here. It has a, it's a second degree power. Now, that makes it quadratic. If we would have taken that off and just had 10x plus 21, that would simply be a linear equation, something that I'm sure we're all a lot more familiar with. So what we are going to be doing is factoring this, breaking it up, because we don't really like to have x's to multiple powers. That makes things really complex and difficult for us to solve. So we want to get it a little simpler where we just have a couple different parts with just an x in it. Now, to start things off, we can rewrite this equation, or I shouldn't say rewrite, uh, there's a template or a pattern that these equations go by, and that is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now this may seem crazy to some of you guys, and that's understandable. It seemed crazy to me at first too, but once you start matching things up, it makes a little bit more sense. Now, like I said, this is like a template or a pattern. It matches up directly with the one that's in line with it, really. I'm going to start down here because it seems a little bit easier. Now, C here, the, I always kind of thought of that as representing our constant, uh, a number without a variable, a number that's not manipulated by an unknown value like X. So C, in this case, is in fact going to equal 21. Those match up right there. Now, here, this B is representing the term that is a coefficient before our x to the first power. And in that case, that is, this case, that is going to be 10 right here, right? Now, the one I've often seen my students struggle with, just because it's kind of invisible, is a. Now, you look up here in our equation and you just see x squared. There's not anything in front of there, right? I've seen way too many times people saying things like, oh, well, that means a equals zero, right? Because there's not an a, but that's not quite what it is. If that a equals zero and, you know, we're multiplying terms that are next to each other, that would cancel out that x squared. So zero is really not going to work there. Anytime there's not a coefficient, it's like an invisible one. Now, that can kind of be a complex topic to think about, especially if you're new to this type of math. But if you, you think about it a little bit, it makes a lot of sense. So A in this case is going to be equal to 1. Now I'm going to move this camera right down here so you can see what A, B, and C are equal to. I've been writing that down, but I don't think it's been in frame. So that is what I meant in my original topic here of when A is equal to 1. Whenever we just have an x squared here at the beginning of our equation, and it's not something crazy like 4x. That's a whole other topic that I'm going to tackle in a different video. So let's go ahead and figure out how to factor this equation. So I'm going to rewrite it on another page. Give me a little bit more room here. So x squared... Uh, plus 10x plus 21. Now, anytime you have just that a equals 1 here, just that x squared, this is going to get broken up into two quantities or two parts that are going to be x 
plus or minus something. I always like to just start writing it with the two quantities and beginning each with x. Now what we need to do is figure out what we are going to fill in in these two parts of the quantities. And to do that, it's going to sound a little complex at first, but it's a very easy system once you get it down. So what we're going to do is we have this middle term, b, right? Now b is equal to 10. And we have this last term, c, and c is equal to 21. What we need to do is find, let me write this out for you here, find factors of c that add to b, or whose sum is b. That's probably a better way to write that, or is uh, find factors of c whose sum is b, right? So we need to find factors of 21 that add to 10. Now I'm sure several of you already have this down in your head, but I'm just going to go through a little process here, so hear me out. Um, so we have 21. We want to come up with what factors could there be in 21? Now, I mean, there's always the obvious. Well, 21 and 1, right? Now, I'm trying to think, is there any other factors? Well, the only other one I can think of is 7 and 3. So we want to test out when we add either of these, do they equal our B value? And in this case, of course it does. I mean, 7 plus 3 is going to be 10, right? That just works out. So that means these two factors are the numbers that's going to go into our quantities. So since these, we take the sign of both of these, this of course is a positive 7 and a positive 3 that we multiply to get 21 and add to get 10. So we add a positive 7 and a positive 3 into our quantities. And that makes this our final answer. Now, uh, I've often had students ask me, does, this, does it matter which order this is in? Does the x plus 7 have to go first? And of course not. These are just two quantities that multiply each other to get to this answer right here. Uh, it does not matter what order these are in. That's just simply our two numbers. Now we can check our work on that through a process called foiling. I will make a video in the future about that. It's not a difficult process at all, and I'm sure many of you already know it. But I'm not going to go into that here. I'll make a separate video for that. Now let's do one more example of factoring. So let's do the example, ah, let's do a little more complex one. I had an easy one written down here that I thought about doing, but what's the fun of doing easy problems, right? So x squared plus 7x minus 44. Now yet again, we just have a x squared here. There's nothing before it, or you know, really there's a 1 before it. Sorry, there's not nothing there. Uh, so we can write our two quantities out and put some x's in there. Now we got to figure out yet again what goes in those quantities. So we are going to, as I said before, find factors of c that add to b or whose sum is b. So let's define what our uh, a, b, and c here is. Now a doesn't really affect this part of the problem, but I like to do it anyway. I'm a math teacher. I, I like writing variables down. So a, of course, is equal to 1. There's nothing there. b is equal to 7, right? And c, uh, yet again, here's where a lot of people I've seen have problems. They say, ah, c is 44, of course, but that's not quite correct. What c actually is is negative 44. We have to pay attention to that sign right before the numbers. If this was a negative right here, then Goodness, we'd be writing a negative 7 right there for b, but it's a, luckily it's a plus sign, so we don't have to worry about that. So yeah, minus 44, sorry, not minus 44, negative 44 is going to be our c value. So we need to find factors of c, or negative 44, that add up to 7. So let's figure it out. Now one thing to keep in mind is that because, sorry, i got to get the paper in frame here, because 44 is negative, then we're going to have to have a positive and a negative factor here, right? Because otherwise, those are not going to multiply to a negative number. So we always have 44 and, well, let's say, negative 1, or negative 44 and 
positive one. But, you know, I'm betting you those aren't going to add up to seven, and I'm sure you guys know that as well. So let's say, what else can we think of? Uh, one I always like when numbers are the same, you know, 11s, right? You can always use 11. So we have 11 and negative 4 or uh, negative 11 and positive 4. So let's figure out if either of these work. Now, 11 plus negative 4, well, that's going to be 7, right? Well, darn, that worked out pretty well. And this, of course, would be negative 7. Now, since this B value is a positive 7, then it looks like we should use the positive 11 and negative 4 because that does get us the pot of positive seven sum I dropped my camera darn okay so x here is going to be plus 11 and then x here minus 4 yet again does not matter the order we have these in but those are our two factors of this original quadratic equation. So hopefully that helped out. That explained factoring a little bit and is a good kind of study guide and uh, has a couple of practice problems here for you. So uh, thanks for watching and until next time.